Today, it's raining. So I've decided to film with a car that removes you from all possible negative experiences, such as bad weather. This is a 2006 Maybach 57S. For those of you who aren't familiar with Maybach, it's an old school, ultra luxury brand that Mercedes revived in 2004 to compete with Bentley and Rolls Royce. There's only one problem. Nobody bought them, evidenced by the fact that this car, which had a base price of $370,000 back in 2006, is currently listed for sale for less than $80,000, which is cheaper than a brand new S-Class. I say it's on the market because this car is currently available for sale here in Miami at Performance Auto Wholesalers, a dealership with quite an impressive inventory of unusual and cool cars. Today I'm going to poke around this thing, I'm going to show you all of its weird quirks and cool features, and then I'm going to get it out on the road and see if the driving experience lives up to the price tag, which again was $370,000 before options 10 years ago. That's like. $450,000 today. Then I'm gonna give it a Doug score. And of course, for more of my thoughts on the Maybach experience, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer where I've written more about this car and I've compiled a list of other used luxury cars selling for way less than their original MSRP. But before I get to the quirks and features of the Maybach, a little information on this one. Now, when Mercedes brought out the Maybach in 2004, they had two versions. There was the 57 and the 62, which referred to their lengths. The 57 was 5,700 millimeters, and the 62 was 6,200 millimeters. Now, the standard engine in the car at the time was a 540 horsepower twin-turbo V12, but Mercedes decided that simply wasn't enough. So then they came out with this one. This is the S model. That meant a larger twin turbo V12 with, listen closely here, 604 horsepower and 738 pound feet of torque. It does zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. In this car, this car that weighs over 6,000 pounds, this is as much as three Lotus Elises, two and a half Mazda Miatas, almost as much as a Hummer H2. That in itself is kind of an unusual quirk. Now on to the rest of the unusual quirks and features in this car. With a quick glance at this car, you might not think there are a lot of weird quirks on the outside, but oh yes, there are. I'll start up front. Now you've probably already seen the Maybach logo hood ornament. It's an M and then another M and it makes a bunch of other M's and you can also kind of mess with the hood ornament and put it wherever you want. That Maybach logo, however, it carries on to some other places. For example, did you know that it's integrated into the headlights? And speaking of the headlights, isn't it a little odd that the turn signal kind of has this monocle over it? Also in front, if you look closely at the front wheels, you'll notice that each front wheel has not one, but two brake calipers. Every other car has one, but when you have a 6,000 pound car that can do zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds, I guess you need two. Now that helps with braking and stopping distance, as you'll see when I drive the Maybach, but the downside is that new brakes are a lot more expensive in this thing than in a normal car. Next up, maybe the coolest exterior feature of the Maybach, around back on the roof, which you can't even see on the camera because this car is so enormous and tall. Now, in front there's a regular sunroof, just like a regular car, and in back there's a panel with, what is that, solar panels? That's right, this car has solar panels on the roof and they're designed to power the climate control system when the car is off to keep it nice and cool inside in case you're just running into a store. That way, you don't have to leave the engine running. Instead, the solar panels do all the work. That sounds crazy, but that's the kind of stuff you get when you get a Maybach. Moving around to the back, one of my favorite exterior features of this car always was its giant rear taillight. Yes, the general design looked a lot like the S-Class, but one way you could tell it apart was this huge taillight. When the headlights were on, it lit up all the way to here on both sides. Now, it's hard to show that on camera because it's an LED, but believe me, it's there. And when you're behind one of these in traffic and you see that giant taillight, there's no mistaking this car for an S-Class. Also around back, the trunk to this car is just a trunk. It opens automatically, but it's a normal trunk in every respect except for the things that you find in the trunk. This and this. This here is a Maybach branded first aid kit. I'm serious. It gives you an idea of exactly how much Mercedes spent to create this brand. They were branding first aid kits for this car, but this, this is more interesting. This is the item that will be least used of any feature in the entire Maybach. That would be the Maybach toolkit. Yes, that's right. This car comes with a toolkit. As if you're gonna break down on the side of the interstate in your Maybach and then you're gonna get out and start wrenching on it in order to fix it and get going again. Also in back, let's talk about the fuel door. Now the fuel door is located here next to the window instead of here on the fender like a normal car. I'm not really sure why, but that's not the strange thing about it. 
The strange thing about it is this. That's right, the fuel door in a Maybach opens upwards, presumably so you can stick your fuel here and you don't have to worry about getting in the way of the fuel door. Nonetheless, it's surprisingly strange and, well, just surprising. The next interesting quirk is the Maybox horn, which sounds, well, a lot like you want the horn to in your pipsqueak little car, but it doesn't actually sound like that. Well, in this thing, it does. Take a listen. And since I'm already using this camera angle, I think we all know what happens next. Oh, that was nice. It gave the hood a nice cleaning as well. Anyway, speaking of the hood, on to the next quirk, which is under the hood. Most cars have an engine cover over the engine. That's pretty common by now. But in this car, however, it's a gold plastic engine cover over the engine with the signature of the guy who built the engine at Mercedes Tuning Arm AMG. Of course, this car has a gold engine cover. Why wouldn't it? Moving on to the windows, you might notice that the windows have a little black outline at the top. That's not because they're bulletproof, but it is because they're a little thicker than usual in order to keep more of the sounds of the outside world out of the Maybach. Next up, moving on to the door panel, you start to get an idea of all the crazy luxury that this car is about, starting with the seat memory settings. Now, your normal boring car probably has two or three seat memory settings. This one has five. Why? Because it's that much better than your car. It also has the seat adjuster here. You can adjust everything in this seat, including the headrest, up to four ways. I counted. There are 14 different ways you can adjust the seat on the door, plus another eight on the seat itself, giving you 22 ways to adjust the seat Plus, there's a massage function on top of that. And as if that wasn't enough, take a look at the door pockets. Your car probably has regular old boring door pockets. This thing has one door pocket with a lid and then a second door pocket that doesn't even reveal itself to you until you push a button, in which case it slowly glides open for you to put things in. Even the door panel in a Maybach screams luxury. Once you get inside the driver's seat, you'll quickly notice one of the big disappointments of this car, especially by modern standards, and that is the pixelated gauge cluster display. It looks really old school, not even close to the multicolor things that all the cars have today. Now, the one thing I do like about this display is that on the screens where it shows an entire image of the car, Mercedes-Benz did devote one single pixel to the hood ornament so that you know you're driving a Mercedes-Benz or a Maybach. Now, there are some cool things about this gauge cluster. Number one is the font used for the speedometer. It's not some stupid, ugly Mercedes-Benz font. Instead, it's this classy, high-end font that they would only use on the finest vehicles. The other cool thing is the floating needles. I drove this car around a little bit and I can't figure out where the needles are centered. It's a really cool feature. Next up, when you get in this car and really start poking around with the buttons, you realize that you have some incredible touches and features in this car. For example, in the driver's seat of a lot of cars, you have the ability to drop the rear headrest so that you can see better. That makes sense. In this car, you have the ability to drop the rear headrests or raise them back up again. I've never seen that before. It's unparalleled in the automotive world in terms of screwing with the people in the back seats. In fact, there are a lot of buttons here on the center console and they do all sorts of things. It looks like there's an automated parallel parking system in this car. There's the typical buttons that turn off the parking sensor. There's another one that changes the following distance with the adaptive cruise control, your sport suspension, you turn off traction control, all that stuff. But the most interesting button here to me is this one. It's the one that allows you to turn on and off forward collision warning. It's incredible to me. This car a 2006 model had forward collision warning and it works when you drive around and a car slows down hard in front of you it beeps at you this is a common feature today but 11 years ago nobody had this i don't even think i knew that it existed it's impressive Next, what would a Maybach be without a rear sunshade? And of course, this is something you can control from the front with a push of this button hidden under here. Now, the interesting thing about this rear sunshade is it doesn't just shade you from the sun, it completely blocks it out with curtains that span the entire back window so that no plebeians can see you as you're driven down the road. Also hidden under that lid with the rear sunshade button, how about personal cup holders? Push on it and your cup holder pops right out, one for the driver's side, one for the passenger side. And so if you don't want to see the cup holders anymore, you can put them away so you don't have to look at such things. Another quirk I absolutely love about this car is the door locks. How can door locks be a quirk? Because in this car, when you press the lock and unlock button, the door locks glide softly up and softly down. You don't hear a thing. In fact, I initially thought they were broken until I actually looked at the locks and I realized they were working just very softly, which fits with the character of the Maybach. It's the same story with the interior lights. Press the interior light button and they don't just turn on, they come on slowly and then they dim slowly, brighten and dim very slowly. Nobody ever would have faulted Maybach if they didn't do this, but 
they did because that's what you get when you buy a $370,000 car. Over here on the passenger side, you'll find a couple of interesting features. One of them is the fact that it looks like this car has two glove boxes. Well, push the button to open the glove box on the left and it's actually where the phone would be stored. You push it and then the phone is presented to you. Close that, open the glove box on the right and you'll find, well, a glove box, but also there's a coin tray in there and a little slot for a pen. I guess that's pretty good attention to detail. Even better is the ashtray. Open up the ashtray and well, it's an ashtray, but if you want to clean it, slide this little lever and the ashtray is just presented to you so you can lift it right out of your Maybach gracefully. Another thing you might find in the glove box of a Maybach is the owner's manual, which is in this nice Maybach leather pouch. Open it up and you'll find, well, the owner's manual. It is 528 pages long. That's right, 528 pages of owner's manual. And that doesn't include the infotainment system owner's manual. Take that out and you got another 290 pages. Combine the two and you got 818 pages of owner's manual when you picked up a Maybach in 06 and you weren't done. Here's the warranty information and the service guide and the maintenance booklet. It adds up to almost a thousand pages of stuff when you got your Maybach that you were intended to read. The last interesting quirk in the front of this car is up here. You see this thing, it looks like an air vent or maybe a speaker. Well, actually, here's something most Maybach owners probably don't even know. It's a hidden compartment. You can put stuff in there that you don't want anybody else to find unless they've seen this video. But just because I'm done with the front quirks in this car doesn't mean I'm done with the quirks. Au contraire, the back maybe is even more ridiculous than the front. For example, in your car, the rear seats probably don't have any sort of storage in the door pockets. In this car, you got two. One's in the front, one's in the back. Both have lids so that you can keep whatever you want out of sight of everyone else. The next things you notice when you're sitting in the back of one of these are up here. Specifically, over here, you have a fold-down vanity mirror that's lighted so that you can fold it down and stare at yourself as your chauffeur drives you. Even more interesting than the vanity mirrors, though, are these dials up here on the scene. They're really nice. And you might be wondering what exactly they're showing. Well, they're constantly showing the rear passengers the speed, the time, and the temperature. And the interesting thing about the speed dial is it's in kilometers per hour, even though this is a standard US production Maybach and the regular speedometer is in miles per hour. A quirk of the Maybach. Next up, we have to talk about rear storage. Now, I already mentioned the door pockets, which is kind of interesting, but back here, there's basically a chest of drawers in the back of this thing. There are four different drawers where stuff is gathered. The top one is just for storing stuff. The middle one is for the DVD player. The third one is to choose which DVD you want to be playing. And the last one is, once again, just to store stuff. It's incredible how much storage is in the back of this car, and it doesn't end there. How about my personal favorite storage item, the center console. You open it up and you'll find a spot where the Maybach phone would be if you still had it. Open it even further and you'll find the refrigerator. Yes, the refrigerator with built-in drink holders. And yes, it is cold. I've been filming for four hours. The car has been on, off, whatever. It feels nice and cool in there. There's also a storage compartment behind the front center console that is incredibly small, but it's there. You can put stuff in it. Beyond the storage, there are also a few other interesting quirks in the back. Like, for example, the map light. It's located up here above the rear door, but how do you turn it on? You push it, you push the air, and it doesn't turn on. Well, you turn it on with an easily pushable button located here in the center console. And of course, just like the other lights, it brightens and dims softly and gently so that you can read the Wall Street Journal without getting upset. And there are quite a few lighting controls back here. One button lets you turn on all the lights in the car. And then finally, there's a switch that lets you control the brightness of the lights inside the car, all from the comfort of your rear seat. Other interesting features in back, how about the fact that the rear seats are also power operated? Of course they are. And more importantly, that they also have five memory settings in case various different tycoons have to come and sit back here. Another interesting thing is, of course, that the rear seats are heated. That's no surprise. And then finally, you have my favorite rear seat luxury car quirk. This little button changes the seat controls from front to rear. So if you're sitting in the rear passenger seat of this car, you can adjust the front passenger seat and move it forward to give yourself more legroom. I love this thing because I love to imagine kids on a car ride screwing with their sibling who's sitting in the front seat. The rear seat also has a few other entertaining quirks. For example, you've heard about rear air conditioning vents and this car has normal sized ones and it also has smaller ones located on the B pillar. 
And then above that, it has really small miniature little air conditioning vents that are just kind of cute and they get out just a little bit of air. I don't know why they did that, but I suspect it makes the rear passengers just a little more comfortable, so why not? Of course, this car also has rear TVs on the back of the front seats. That's not surprising or exciting anymore, but it has them nonetheless. More surprising and exciting is maybe my favorite rear seat quirk, that would be the cup holders. Well, they aren't actually cup holders. Instead, if you push them, they just barely go down. What are they for? That would be champagne flutes. They're designed to grip onto the very bottom of a champagne flute. And that thing in front, that's not designed for a water bottle. That's designed for a bottle of champagne. I am not making this up. It says all this exactly in the owner's manual, somewhere on page 732, probably. So those are all the MyBox cool features and weird quirks. It's no surprise that it has a lot of them. Now it's time to get this thing out on the road and experience sports car acceleration in a vehicle that weighs as much as an Amazon distribution center. It definitely has a more substantial feel to it than an S-Class. It definitely feels more removed from the road than an S-Class. Uh, I don't know that it feels dramatically more of those things than an S-Class, which is surprising because it was intended to be on such a higher level than that car. Uh, the problem is the S-Class is just a really damn good car and it's hard to improve on it so much that you can justify charging people $400,000. Now, at $80,000, it's a different story. I mean, this car, it's just your car, a car, completely on steroids. And then you floor it. Oh, wow. That is a lot faster than it should be. And, and you think about how you have 6,000 pounds at your disposal. And let me raise up my headrest. Oh. Oh, wow. It's just pillowy soft. And I mean, I do feel very removed from the road, just like you do in a Rolls Royce, maybe a little bit less. It feels maybe a little bit more high performance than that. Uh, and, and not quite as floaty and, and relaxed. It's kind of ready to go, like right now. <laughs> it's not that fast, I admit, but it's way faster than a car like this should be. I like looking out over the Maybach logo. You have this instant feeling that you're better than everyone else. With that said, I mean, a lot of the switch gear in this car is directly out of a Mercedes-Benz model. I suspect one of the problems that they ran into when they created this car is that a lot of people were coming out of an S-Class and moving up to the next level. And I would have suspected that those people maybe didn't feel uh, like they were getting enough. I mean, the turn signals, the, the shift lever, the, even the steering wheel, it's, uh, which is a lot of the stuff that you touch and feel on a normal basis, it feels like it came directly out of an S-Class. It does insulate you dramatically from the road. I'm also still a little bit mystified by how these gauges work. The brakes are very strong. You can feel they have just a tremendous pull because uh, they know that they needed something really serious to slow down a car that's this heavy and large. I'm just not really sure where the dramatic increase in value is with this car. Of course, that's I'm talking about from a new perspective. I mean, on the used market, this car starts to become a pretty good deal because it's almost a conversation piece. You have the coolest thing that Mercedes-Benz made and you paid a lot less for it, you know, than you would have for an S-Class. It's very quiet in here, very removed, very isolated, but these are all things I felt in the S-Class. As I drive this car, I really can start to see why Maybach had trouble. Uh, and, and obviously, as you look at it, you know that it just, you know, it looked like an S-Class. And that was a big issue they had. I mean, I've had people tell me that, they, oh, the Mimax is just an S-Class with nicer stuff, right? Well, no, it's actually a completely unique car with completely unique cosmetics. I mean, it, it was a different everything. It was larger, longer, wider. It looked completely different. It's just that they didn't really make it that distinctive. So that's the 2006 Maybach 57S. It has the acceleration of a sports car. It has the features of a Rolls Royce, admittedly a Rolls Royce from 10 years ago. And it has the price tag of a pretty nice BMW 5 Series. The main problem with this car was its styling. Most analysts think that Maybach failed simply because they didn't look distinctive enough. They look too much like an S-Class. But if you know this car and you see one on the street, you get excited. And now you know a little bit more about it. Anyway, on to the Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the 57S isn't an ugly car, but it's also not a special one. It's not distinctive, and so it goes right in the middle with a 5 out of 10. Acceleration is impressive. It does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, which earns it a 6 out of 10. Handling is good considering its size, but it does have considerable heft, and that means it gets just a 4 out of 10. 
Cool factor is highly debatable, and I don't know about you, but personally, I get really excited when I see one of these, even if only for its rarity and its weirdness. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Importance, however, is a different story. Mercedes tried this ultra-luxury experiment. It failed, and it went away. This car will end up being just a footnote in their history, and it gets only a 5 out of 10. Add it all up, and the total weekend score is a mere 27 out of 50. It definitely wouldn't be my first choice for a Sunday drive. Moving on to the daily category, starting with features, the Maybach was really well equipped for its time, but it lags behind by today's standards and it gets only a 6 out of 10. Next up is comfort, and that's where this car shines. It's not perfect, but it's really close and it earns a 9 out of 10. Next up is quality, which measures materials and reliability. Materials are pretty good, but reliability is a bit of a fear. This car has a lot of expensive, unique parts, and owning one is very pricey. It gets only a 6 out of 10. Next up is practicality. It's 21.4 cubic feet of cargo space, enough to earn it a 5. A huge interior would bump that higher, but the gas mileage is so bad at 11 miles per gallon city and 16 highway that I'm keeping it at a 5 out of 10. Finally, value. When this car was new, it would have been a 1, but it's slowly creeping up, and I'm happy to now give it a 4 out of 10, but I could see that number increasing as prices continue to fall. Add it all up, and the total daily score is 30 out of 50, placing it in the top third and that's where it deserves to be as this is an excellent daily cruiser if you can afford to keep it running. Total it up and the Doug score is 57 out of 100 which is a decent and respectable score for a decent and respectable car that never quite turned heads like the competition.